Well, this is our time. I love that January is the month of faith. And as Reverend Maggie and I uh, started preparing for this talk, the events of this week caused us a lot of consternation and, mm -hmm. and challenged that, that, you know, what do we do and feeling hopeless. And it's never hopeless. Because as a tree has deep roots, those roots which sustain and nurture every leaf and every plant, branch is just like in us. In us, rooted within us, is that very essence of God, that Christ principle. And that's always with us, giving us nurturing health and wholeness, and restoring us. And all we need to do is turn to be rooted in faith. Absolutely. It's those same roots that allow us to stand strong in the storm of life. And we saw that play out this week. We saw human emotions taking toll and swirling like a hurricane that wrecked our emotional bodies. And when that shows up, when we are rooted in faith, we can take on the storm. We can take on the swirl of what is going on in the external and know right here within our being that God is at work in all things, in all ways, for the highest and best outcome for everyone. Not just for you or not just for me or just for you, but for everyone. So what a great way to look at our faith and move through what we're asked to do anytime in our lives. I love that. And we're starting with this quote from Harold Sherman. Now, Harold Sherman was an author, philosopher, a theologian, and wrote movies and, and great books. He says, faith brings our power and the power of God together on the human level so that God can work through us and help us achieve what we wish or need. So this faith is calling to that rooted sense within us. That power of God that's always present. And when we can bring our innate power of God, our 12 powers, which faith is one of them, with our light, with our strength, we can work through any situation. And unity has a powerful couple of tools to handle any situation, and that is denials and affirmations. And we're going to be using those and seeing how we can apply those because it is our, where are we putting our faith? Mm -hmm. Where are you putting your faith? Do you put your faith into your fear or do you put your faith in God? in love. We're human. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. And within that human experience, we're going to have trauma. We're going to have shame. We're going to have judgment. We're going to have fear. We're going to have lack. What do we do with that stuff? We're also going to have love and laughter and integrity and prosperity and joy and creativity. It's all part of our journey. It is. I really like what we have coming from Molly Friedenfeld. She is a philosopher and author, and she says that focusing on keeping faith and growing your roots of light so strong and so deep that no one, not even yourself, can make you believe something about yourself that is not good for your soul. 
The reason this resonated with me is because I almost create an adamant um, air about me when someone else is telling me it can't be done. It's okay if you don't take that leap. If you're afraid, then it's like, oh, I'm going to show you. But when I am faced with just myself, when I am sitting alone in a quiet house or trying to get to sleep or waking up early in the morning, you know the drill. You're with your own thoughts. And they can be thoughts of affirmation and aligning in truth. They can be in alignment with God. They can be uplifting and telling you that you can do absolutely anything because you have the power in that co-creative connection with God to produce and manifest outwardly. And they can be destructive. Those thoughts can pull you in from a version of yourself that you were 20 years ago and point to shameful events, embarrassment, times where you failed and fell flat on your face and discourage you from getting up and trying again. My mind does that often to me. I, I'm 43 years old and sometimes I think I'm thinking about myself like I was 20, like I don't know better, like I haven't walked through life. So being in faith and being strong and in alignment with the truth of our nature allows for us to tell those thoughts, thank you, thank you for playing and remember who I am so that I can move forward with strength and ease and grace and take responsibility for what I am contributing in the creation of our world. That's so true. And then I want to turn us toward this wisdom of Martha Smock. Martha Smock uh, led Daily Word for many years, and her wisdom really touches my heart so often. To have faith, is to be willing to work, to be willing to give of your time and energy to accomplish that which needs to be done. Faith is the working power of the word. Mm -hmm. Now, I love this because there's a lazy part of me, I'm willing to admit, that wants to just sit back, Okay, God, do it. I'm going to, you just do, you do it. And guess what? Whenever I do that, I, I can sit there a long time. Because we've been empowered. We have these innate faculties because it's our job to walk, to lift our hands and arms, to open our heart. God's willing to work with us, but he's not going to clean up our mess for us. Who made the mess anyway? <laughs> <laughs> the responsibility is ours. And we can have the faith. And one of the ways that we work our faith is to take time in prayer and meditation. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, when I sit down for prayer and meditation, it can be the noisiest time of the day because my mind starts going off on all of the things that I've done wrong or all the things you've done wrong because I just have to keep track. And that is all ours. It's our work. And when we can adopt, I'm falling apart here, Okay, when we can come into our own being and we can wrestle our own demons to a place of now, mm -hmm. I can begin, then unity does have some power tools. And I'm talking power tools you can work all day long and they always work. So that's where we're going to go next. Yes. So we're starting with denials. 
And Charles Fillmore, Unity co-founder, says this about denials. Denial usually comes first. It sweeps out the, de old, out the debris and makes room for the new tenant that is brought into mind by affirmation. It would not be wise to el eliminate old thoughts unless I knew there are higher and better ones to take their place. You know, I kind of believe that this is where we are as a collective. We are in the process of re-identifying ourselves as a collective unit of people on this planet. And for us to adopt new ideas and new ways of being and thinking and showing up in the world, we have to recognize and excuse those old thoughts. Show them the door. It could be, I am, you know, afraid of, I feel afraid of the circumstances in our world, and that has no power to control how I show up today. I love to think about in this quote where he says, tenant, we have all moved into a new apartment or a new house. And when we move into that place, our imagination has already taken hold, possessive ownership of how we want to set up our home and how it's going to feel and smell on certain days. And when you open that door, can you imagine the disappointment if there was still trash and litter and dust and dirt around? It makes it really hard for us to take that mental ownership. So I love the fact that denials paint the picture of clean sweep. We have, we're letting that go. Thank you for playing, no longer necessary. And then find our footing in alignment with the truth. What do you think? I think it's powerful. And an important truth about denials, this is brought forth by Hypatia Hasbrook, a unity minister who wrote a powerful comprehensive book of positive prayer. She says, a denial does not declare the negative appearance does not exist. It declares that the negative appearance is powerless over me. Mm -hmm. This is an important distinction because in psychology today, denial has a completely different meaning. This is a different definition. So we're, so that fear, the judgment, the diagnosis, the pain, the struggle, the mess, the dirt, whatever, what we're saying is rather than having our belief in that, mm -hmm. having our life grounding, standing on that old belief, we're simply saying that belief has no power, no control over me. I set it aside. I let go of it. I deny it. And we always follow a denial by affirming something. To fill, the, we've created space, fill it with truth. Mm -hmm. And Charles Fillmore again, talking about what an affirmation is, is he says that each affirmation helps us to build up a, a substantial, firm, unwavering state of mind because it establishes truth in my consciousness, like roots. But it takes practice. You think about those old thoughts, those old things, you know, when, if you were learning to walk all over again, for instance, we've held the idea for nine months, if you were one of my kids, you couldn't walk. And then one day you can, and you have to stop holding in mind that you can't walk that you can't do something because you couldn't do it before. And in that same instance is a recognition, affirmation of what is true from the knowledge base, from your spiritual journey, from your independent study, what you have come to know is the truth today. It will change tomorrow. But today is affirming truth and oneness and power and strength and realness in God and allowing for that to be what gets our attention.
our time, our energy, and our thoughts so that the affirmation becomes habitual and we don't get snared by old thoughts, old feelings based on old actions, but stay present and in alignment and in truth. And when we're rooted in that, all of the swirl of chaos can be going on. And I've got a lot of chaos in my life. I've got three kids. Come on. I've got chaos. There's always something. If I was not in practice and in strength, then it would be really easy to just slide backwards instead of standing firm in truth. I love this. And Using the wisdom of Mae Rowland, who was head of Silent Unity for many years, and a very powerful woman. I didn't get to meet her, but I've heard wonderful stories about her strength. When faith is rightly placed, that is, when it's fixed upon that which is true and uplifting, it makes us strong, masterful, and courageous. Now, this life that we're in. We just let go of 2020, and 2020 did give every one of us a dose of challenge. Mm -hmm. And we've survived. Mm -hmm. we're, we're here. And part of why we're here is because we have had enough wisdom to turn to our faith, which is that ability to perceive and do it and, and to know things even when it doesn't appear yet. And when we can focus on that innate wisdom within us, we can turn to that Christ center, we can turn to God, we can turn to that rooted sense of us that's always present. And when we choose again in affirmation, to fill that space, and any thought that comes up in fear, like, I have this fear that the global pandemic is never going to end. Well, with that fear, I can simply say the fear that global pandemic is never going to end has no power over me. It's powerless over me. And right now, because I know that one with God, I have strength. I have mastery. And I have courage to make right decisions to live my life. And within that, we're always ready. We're always rooted in faith. And all we need to do is turn within. And at any time we choose, we can use those power tools of denial and affirmation to let go of anything that doesn't serve us and then know our truth. Step out on the water, release your faith. Every step is stronger. Step out on the water.